Steven Universe is the property of Cartoon Network, Rebecca Sugar, and its respective owners. Any and all footage or images have been used for the sole purpose of critique or parody, and as such are protected under fair use. Please support the official release. Hey, how are you? I'm Slice of Otaku, and it's time for the review, or maybe the rant, because this episode, Room for Ruby, is just so problematic in so many different ways. But I don't mean to say that it's a bad episode. It is a good episode. I enjoy this episode. I love Navy's portrayal in this episode. But the way in which this episode lines up with previous episodes, it's just bad. If Stephen Bomb 5 never happened, this would be far more acceptable. But because Stephen Bomb 5 is a thing, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, are the Crystal Gems this lazy? Are they this ignorant? It doesn't compute i don't get it guys i haven't been complaining about the rubies forever for no reason this episode its outcome it was predictable you do not need future vision to see that this would happen if they just did nothing and lately in my comments i've been noticing people ask me what would they have done with the rubies if they went into space to get them well first off they promised that they would and second off they could just bubble them i would prefer that they bubble them and remove that threat that danger because they have plenty of gems bubbled up. We don't know who's corrupted, who's shattered what. <laughs> we don't know what's going on with those gems. But because they did not own up to their own decisions, because they just sat on their asses, we have this new danger. And I really can't root for the crystal gems on this one because they could have easily avoided this. So many of us predicted this like three months ago and Stephen Bomb 5 did not make this situation any better. It made it worse. There is more of an impending threat. They should have gone for the rubies, but they never do. But anyways, let me get on with the review. Okay, so Steven and Garnet are making wishes to stars and Navy crash lands. And Navy just lets them know that they're cool. Everything that was done to the rubies by them, every bad thing, it's cool, it's all right. And Garnet's not really sure, but Steven manages to convince her to let him take care of her by reminding her that she was once a ruby who came down to earth and, you know, found out it was a magical place. And I have to admit, that was a really cute moment. The little um, Garnet, oh stop, I loved it. But yeah, Steven's put in charge of something. This is his responsibility. Taking Navy in is a reflection of his decision making. Steven judges books by their covers, obviously because he saw that Navy was, you know, nice. She was the nicest of the rubies before. So he's like, oh, she's good, she's good. And he advocates for her. He throws his neck on the line for this character. But for characters who are more outwardly villainous, but on the inside, they're not really that bad. Steven doesn't acknowledge. He just sees the cover, which is interesting. And I honestly thought that Adventures in Light Distortion would change Steven's decision making. I thought that he would look at things from a more logical standpoint that after that ordeal he would put more thought behind his actions but i guess not so we head over to peridot and lapis and i guess pumpkin likes steven now he's all happy to see steven so i'm glad pumpkin got over the whole mutilation thing so steven introduces navy to them and says that she's gonna live here now Peridot is instantly cool with it, but Lapis is not. She expects Navy to be as resentful and hateful as she is, and actually puts Navy in a water ball, which I think is rude. I mean, if Steven was introducing another gem like a Pearl type character, it would not bode over well. But because Navy's a simple, cute little ruby, it works out. Lapis explains her skepticism. Life on Earth is hard to get used to, and she's still getting used to it. She says that Navy just can't be cool with them. It doesn't make sense. Although she was just suddenly cool with the crystal gems, but uh. But like Steven, Peridot advocates for Navy to give her a chance, and she suggests that they try to educate her, tell her things about Earth. And from this exchange, we learn that Homeworld has no rain or weather changes. And that makes sense because for a planet to sustain organic life, you need water. But the gems aren't organic life. They don't need water in any capacity. Weather change is unnecessary. By keeping things constantly the same, it's predictable. That's exactly how they want their subjects. And if we look at this from the mind state of a dictator, by exposing your subjects to any sort of change, it would make them think that they can change, which they should not be. And if Homeworld has no water, no rain, that can sort of give us an idea as to why Homeworld needs lapises. If water is present on all the organic plants that they decide to utilize, 
then they need a gem to be able to manipulate it and get it out of their way or use it to their advantage. And for Navy to have never seen rain, that must mean that they eliminate the weather effects on all planets. Remember, Lapis was only meant to be on Earth for a little while, so it seems like Lapises go onto planets first, eliminate the weather effects, do whatever they have to do, leave, and then the homeworld gems will come onto it and it'll be, you know, a usable planet. And remember how Steven convinced the rubies to go to Neptune to find Jasper? Yeah, fun fact, research indicates that it actually rains diamonds on Neptune. I also want to point out that at this point, Peridot manipulates metal with ease. While having a conversation, she just brings over an umbrella like it's nothing. She has complete mastery over her, her power. And if they're teaching, if they're having lessons, they need to teach Steven how to put in work and master his abilities. He has so many, they're just sitting on the shelf doing nothing. His levitation? Useless. Remember when he tried teaching Peridot how to shapeshift and was still pulling cat fingers? Come on now, my boy. We also learned that Lapis sleeps and snores obnoxiously. And man, Lapis is a hater. Oh my God. You guys talked about me hating on Lapis. Man, Lapis would hate on me. Lapis will hate on you. Lapis is just a straight up hater. When she sees that Navy is just assimilating, she's living good, she's having a good time, she's happy. Lapis wants Navy to be upset, to be angry, to be mad. And my question is, if Navy did get mad and she just started pummeling you, what would you do, Lapis? You asked for it, right? Just take it. And I know Navy played them in the end, but the way in which Lapis conducted herself was just shameful. Just because someone was getting used to Earth faster than her, she was getting pissed. I mean, her tone was just yikes. What about pumpkin? Do you love pumpkin too? She asked her if she likes the dirt. Come on now. But something that stuck out to me when Lapis was questioning why Navy isn't mad, Navy says that that's the one thing that she can't do. And although Navy lied and stuff, I think she might be telling the truth here. I think Navy is incapable of getting angry, and anger is a typical Ruby trait. I think that Navy is special. She's actually intelligent and thinks multiple steps ahead. She had this planned out from the moment she landed on Earth. That's incredible. That's more so than any other Ruby that we've seen. And I mean, Cartoon Network wanted us to think that all Rubies were dumb with their tweet, but Navy obviously isn't. Now, does this mean she's overcooked, undercooked? Nah, I don't think so. Rose Quartz was different and that wasn't a defect. She was just different. And I think that Navy is the same way but in her own way, I suppose. And I can't forget to point out Peridot's hair. Peridot's hair progressively is getting bigger. I don't know if this is some hidden trait of hers, but it seems to be shared with Lapis. Lapis's hair gets bigger in certain shots, so what's going on there? But because Navy is having such a great time, Lapis secludes herself. She feels as though something is terribly wrong with her, the fact that Navy just landed on Earth and loves it to death, but she's been on Earth for a while now and is still adjusting. Navy pulls up and says how bad she feels about making someone else feel bad and man, Navy is the biggest troll, like look at her face, dog. And she says how she doesn't know where she would go if they didn't want her. That her ship is the only place in which she's actually belonged. And Steven's stupid, stupid, stupid self suggests that she takes them on a joyride. I expected so much more from Steven. I thought that his decision making was gonna be beautiful. But obviously it is not. It is flawed and it's just getting progressively worse. So they get in the ship and Steven says, this is perfect, the crystal gems finally have a pilot. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> so they're cruising around and Navy says, hey, Steven, push that button, I'll show you what this baby can really do. Steven then presses it, propelling them all outside of the ruby ship besides Navy. And I find it interesting, that button being placed right there conveniently. I mean, it's kind of weird. What would be the purpose of that button being all the way over there? Because it simultaneously protected Navy while she was in her seat. I mean, that's a weird design, isn't it? But yeah, Navy is a psychopath, one of my favorite types of characters. And she says how it would be no fun to steal it, that she had to see the looks on their faces and that the only problem was that they were still holding on. 
man, Navy, Navy skyrocketed to my top five gems. I love Navy after this. Like before it was a whole squad, but Navy has proven herself. She single-handedly gained my affection. I love Navy, man. I want to give her a big old hug from the beginning of this episode. An even bigger hug at the end of this episode. I am so happy that the Crystal Gems are getting what they deserve. And I've been noticing people saying how Navy tricked them. Oh my gosh, outrage. But didn't Steven and the Crystal Gems trick the Ruby Squad three times? I mean, Eyeball said, You owe me four times. You already fooled me. And you can't fool me again. <laughs> So when Lapis gets a little too aggressive, Navy, you know, spins the ship around and drops them into the ocean. And I want you to know that I was feeling for Lapis. I felt for this character. And by no means did anything that she said in this episode excuse, you know, her actions that I displayed in my recent video about her. But I did feel for this character. And all of that was negated by her final actions in this episode. I want you to remember, that they are in the ocean at this time and Steven says quick Lapis she's getting away so there was a possibility she could have done something mind you she is in her element she has the water and sure you can argue that the ship has the capability to pretty much bend reality with its speed but why did Lapis make no effort to do anything and we've seen that the ship Bending reality is not an instantaneous thing. There's like a little bit of setup, but instead of doing anything, Lapis is just continuously laughing. I mean, Lapis becomes Captain Hindsight at this point. I knew it. I knew it. Like, do we need that right now? Can you can you say that after you've stopped her, please? And after they get back on the shore, she's still laughing and Peridot hits her with a look like, are you serious right now? But you know what? Garnet's reaction is just as bad. She appears with two balloons, one for a good outcome and one for a bad outcome. My question is, if there was a possibility of a bad outcome, and I'm sure there were numerous bad outcomes, why did she not play a role in this episode or at least be in the shadows, be behind the scenes like she was in the episode Steven's Dream? When Steven went to see Blue Diamond, she was there. She was hiding, but she was there. I don't see why Garnet was not present. She went to the shore, so obviously she saw something bad happen, but did nothing? Come on, like, what is the point of future vision at this point? And she has the nerve to say that it was worth a shot. What was worth a shot? You did nothing. But you know what? What if Navy was good? What if Navy did stay on Earth? Okay, I don't think that they would ever go for the rubies because Navy came back and said that all the other rubies were mean to her and she doesn't want to go back to Homeworld. They said, okay, we'll keep you and never go for the other ones. Once again, going with that mentality of they're all bad, just forget about them. I mean, one of the things that made me fall in love with this show is how real and genuine it can be and how much sense it can make. The emotions of characters, they correlate and just mesh and make sense. But this makes no sense. And I'm terribly sorry to say it, but this is bad writing. And you guys know that I will give credit where it is due, but this this is a fail. And yes, this could lead to some crazy stuff, confrontation between Earth and a homeworld. Okay, that's great, that's amazing, I would love to see that. But the means that brought us to this point are stupid. Like, imagine this, the gems all hold hands and with the power of friendship, they reach homeworld. Just they, they tap their shoes together and they are on homeworld. Okay, yeah, we're on homeworld, holy shit, look at that, that's so cool, that's amazing. But the way in which we got to this point, what the hell is that? That's trash, and that is what we got with this Ruby stuff. As a standalone, this was not a bad episode. In fact, it's better than the episodes that we've been getting recently. But the way in which it correlates with the past episodes, the other episodes, and the presentation of the Crystal Gems, it fails, it bombs, it is horrible. But you know what? That's just my opinion and it may be harsh, but I am curious what you guys may be thinking. Let me know in the comments. How did you feel about this episode and how do you feel about its connection to past episodes? Be sure to share this video with anyone who's watched this episode and have an awesome day. I love you.